Hello, everyone. It is Chrissy and Tanner back with you again from Common Sense Education. You know, we're here every week. We're helping you out. We want to tell you about some cool tools that you can use in your classroom, recommend to others. We are here every Tuesday. So please come back, look at the old videos, and get ready for the new ones. This week, it is Tanner's turn. And Tanner, why don't you tell us about the tool that you're going to tell us about today? So we're going to be talking about Miro. This is a difficult tool to do in this format, uh, but I'm going to do my best. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I have faith in you. It's going to be great. This it's complicated. So uh, the good news is it's uh, free and you can go to Miro.com. Um, and try it out. I'll actually be using a regular user trial account for this, but educators can apply and get a free account that has far more access than even I'll show you here. Um, but as you can see in our review, the pitch is that it's an interactive whiteboard, but I just don't know that that quite captures what's going on with Miro. Um, it is a whiteboard in that what you're essentially doing is operating in like a workspace. Like consider this, like it, it's essentially an infinite canvas that you can add to, zoom out from, zoom into, and drop things into. It has all of the tools you'd expect with a whiteboard, you know, text tools, uh, stickies, pens, all of that business, but it operates more like Prezi. If people are familiar with that, Chrissy, do you know Prezi? I do. So the zooming in and out and yeah, I, I flow. Don't... Yeah. It, and that's a cool thing about Miro as well is that you can also flow through it. So if you look here, you have your canvas, you can drop things into your canvas and then you can present those things and move through what you've dropped in. Um, and the way you do that is by, let's kind of take you through an example of this. So what you see here, these are templates that are already kind of baked in. You could create these two with the tools that Miro gives you, but it's much easier to just go to their template library and find something that is at least close enough to what you need. And the template library is amazing. There's also the Miroverse, which is um, user generated. And there's a lot of educators in this community as well. So you're going to find alongside some of this business stuff like this OKR planning board, which sounds really serious. You will find um, some, here, let's actually go here. If you go to the Miroverse, you'll see a little education button. And there are uh, a lot of teachers, a lot of students designing stuff that you can just use the template, drop right in. Um, Do you need so, to like plug your head in or anything to access the Miroverse or is it? <laughs> Zuckerberg is at work on that as we speak. So <laughs> it, it should be coming soon. Um, but what you can do is we'll just pick one at random here, use this template, and then it'll drop that. Whoa, this one's big. It drops that into your workspace here. Um, and this will be all editable. And you then surround it with a frame. There's my little frame over here. And this kind of tells Miro that, oh, this is like a slide now. So then when I go to present, it's part of, well, this one had some frames built in, but you see, I can kind of move through. So it combines in this really interesting way, functionality that you would see with a, a whiteboard where you know, you can just do your simple stickies and type in your stickies and make your notes. But then it once you start constructing this thing, it turns into a, a presentation platform. Uh, it also has on top of it a ton of collaboration features. This is built not just for one person to be working on, but for a team. And if I go back... Let's just go to the Miro site here. 
Um, how do I get to the... Well, I don't think I can, but you can... So Miro supports, for the free account for teachers, 100 users um, and one workspace. Students get access for two years. But that means, as a teacher... If you have students, and this is for, you know, Miro's privacy policy says 13 and up, you can add a hundred of your students into a workspace like this, and they can all be working and collaborating. And you can do this live, right? Everyone can be in here and you can send reactions while people are working to let them know how things are going. You can comment on things, um, you know, this is great for feedback. It can be resolved or you can reply to comments. You can do video chats. You can uh, toss up uh, polls somewhere down here voting. So this is an upgrade feature, but teachers get this for free. You can actually have like students vote on one of these choices for substitution down here. You can throw that up. There's a chat feature that you can have live while you're going through this. So it really, um, here's where you can see all of your comments. Um, I'm not quite sure what the cards feature is. There's a lot going on in here and I haven't quite figured out what it all is. You it's can just do- for poker, <laughs> straight up poker. That would be cool. This would be perfect <laughs> for like games. You could totally see like a Jeopardy game, classic uh, school Jeopardy game with this. Um, but if you allow Miro to access your microphone and camera, you can also use this for screen sharing. Um, so wow. you can record a kind of screen recording with Miro. It's an incredibly impressive platform, not just um, for teaching and facilitation. You can completely see teachers using this for um, PD or for, for lesson facilitation because you can just present you know, your information. But you throw 100 students in here, it'll get a little wild and crazy, but um, I think it has the, the controls and the messaging and the feedback to really make this a, an amazing platform for student collaboration, I think, as well. It's like equally good for both purposes. Uh, but it is one of those things where it's a lot to take in um, I'm still struggling with figuring out everything that's going on. But in terms of whiteboard tools like this, it feels so much more intuitive. Um, so it looks intimidating, but once you start getting into it, it kind of works the way you want it to. Yeah, I mean, it seems super impressive and useful. And I'm wondering, so it's totally free for teachers. Yeah, well, it is. So from what I gather, the te the free teacher account, which supports one workspace, 100 students, most teachers will feel totally satisfied with that. There are some may want to go wild and have multiple workspaces managing a bunch of different classrooms. And, and at that point, you're going to have to upgrade. But you could apply for the educator account. And really, this this it's going to work for you, I feel. And even myself, I'm not on that teacher account. I'm just using the free account. It's kind of doing enough to where I could really see myself using it. And when I did go to sign up for it, uh, there was already a, a Common Sense account created by the design team. So they've already been using it <laughs> for free. <laughs> uh, they so, know. So yeah, They know what's it, up. And I suppose even with one workspace, if you wanted individual groups of students to work on their own project, you can just spread them out. I mean, you could designate areas on one workspace if it's infinite. You don't need separate ones necessarily. Yeah, it's as big as the universe, theoretically. So you could just spiral down into the canvas. Yes. Students could be working in one little speck off in the yes. distance. Um, and totally separated. So you could create your own little metaverse inside the world of Miro um, and using just one workspace. Nice. Well, that sounds pretty amazing. Um, and if you want to hear about more tools, come back and see us again every Tuesday. Common Sense Education, we are here for you. Um, 
please hang in there. We're almost to winter break. You're doing great. And we will uh, see you very soon. Background went away for a second there, but... <laughs> <laughs>